Flow. Oops, earthquake. Hello, I don't see anyone out there hopping on, but if when you hop on, if you would just um, say hello so I know you're there. Otherwise, I was just sitting here coloring by myself, so I figured why not see if there's someone out there that might want to hang out with me. So, I decided I was going to color Floral Friends. I was going to color one of the Jamie girls and one of the me girls. Hi, Brenda. There are some people that stay up late like me. So I just thought since I was sitting here coloring all by myself that I would see if anybody wanted to join me or hang out with me. So I'm going to color these girls. I stamped them from the Floral Friends set. So there's four girls in the stamp set and a few really sweet sentiments that you can put along with it. It also comes with dyes. So I stamped this girl and this girl on the paper and now I'm going to color them. And these are this, this is the skin tone colors that I'm going to use. So I'm going to start with E000, go to E00, E11, E21, and E04. But I'll probably do it backwards because I'll color dark to light. Hi Mary. I can see you guys are watching, but you're quiet. So if you want to say hi, jump in and say hi. If you just want to watch, that's okay too. So let me see if I can zoom in a bit more. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Okay. So I'm going to color these girls and when I'm using um, the color that I'm using, I'm going to put the caps in here so you can see and you'll know um, which ones I'm, I'm using. So I'm going to start with E000. Uh -oh. I hope if you guys are commenting, I'm able to see it. Um, I don't see anyone commenting yet, but just in case, if there's anyone out there um, that wants to say hi so I can see if I can see your comments, or if you guys just want to hang out there, that's okay too. I am going to start with E000 and I'm going to wet the paper. This is sweet sentiment paper we sell in the shop. And I can put the link to the shop under the video once I post it. So I'm going to do uh, both girl skin tones first. So I'm going to start with this girl. And I'm just going to wet the paper with the E000. And I'm just going to color all of her face. And I'll do her arms and her the little bit of her legs after I put all of the other colors onto her face. I'm going to move on to E04, which is my darkest color. And I'm going to do the shadow areas. So I'm going to start with right up here under a hairline because this flower is probably shading her a bit. I'm also going to do under this hair. And then I'm going to do around her ear. I'm going to do down the side of her face just a little bit, and this side of her neck and bit of her collar. I'm not going to do a whole lot on this side. I am going to do a little bit where her ear is, because I don't think, I think that's got more of the sunlight if it's, coming in from this direction. 
So I have a little bit of the shadow area on there. I'm going to move on to E21. And I'm going to push that darkest color back into itself to keep that dark color on there. I just love these little floral girls. They are so cute and so much fun. And I feel like you can just use them on just about any kind of card or design that you want. So I'm gonna move on to E11. And I'm just gonna extend that out a little bit more from where the last coloring was. So I'm still gonna do a little bit of the pushing, but I'm gonna go over the areas where they were. I kind of do a little less under her glasses because I want that to be just a little bit lighter from the reflection of the glasses. I'm going to go down this side of her face because this is my third color so it's like her true skin color. I'm also going to go a little under her nose and a teeny bit under her glasses just to kind of bring it, bring it together. Leaving a bit of the skin area to do with my next color, which is E00. And I'm going to fill in the rest with E00, softening those edges where the last color was so that you get a nice smooth little blend. I'm going to put it in there and then I'm going to give it a second to kind of blend together. And then I'm going to just touch up the spots that stayed a little bit darker just to kind of smooth that out a bit. She's got a little bit of shadow up under here, but that'll fix when we do her little blush, which I'm going to do with R11. It's this one. I'm just going to put a little bit of rosy cheeks on her on both sides. And then I'm going to blend that out with my E00. Again, just to smooth those lines a little bit. And give her some cute little rosy cheeks. So I'll keep that R11 for my other girl. Now I'm going to do her arms and her little feet at the same time. So I'm going to start with the E000 again. And I'm going to wet the paper that color on her arms. It's kind of quiet in here, but can you hear? We have our, our 3D machine run, printer running right now, so you can probably hear that. But this is how quiet my craft room usually is, just kind of quiet over here in the little, in the Ledoux house. going to move on to the E04. I hope that I can see if you guys are commenting. I don't see any comments right now, so hopefully somebody will feel brave enough. Oh, there we go. Yay. We're hanging out with you from California. Yay. Oh, you like my marker holder? <laughs> You're just peeking? <laughs> yes, I just decided that, oh, they're all they're all starting to show up now. Hi, Jen. Yes, this is the holder that my husband made. This is what he's printing over on the 3D printer. Is um, It holds a five color blend and then the caps so you guys can see them clearly when we're... Yes, I always color late night. This is... I always color late night. Um, so these are going to be in the shop soon at Sweet Sentiment. I'm going to color the dark shadow areas like her hand behind the flower a little bit down her arm and against her body and then i'm going to do this one a little bit under her arm i'm going to mark just a teeny bit where her elbow bend, bends just to show that bend a little bit and i'm not going to do much on her hands because it's sticking out and i feel like it would be you know pretty light on her hands so then i'm going to go down where her feet where her jeans are covering her this is a very small area, so you have to do really tiny little strokes. I always color this late. In fact, 
I am usually coloring until midnight or so. So I thought, well, tonight I would jump in and see if there was anybody lurking around this late at night or if it's just me. I mean, Jamie always has her live so early in the morning, sometimes I'm not even awake yet or not coherent enough to watch a video yet. But I figured there had to be some of us night owls hanging out here that might like to, to visit together. So in the morning, all those early birds will see, oh, I missed her coloring. If I had enough uh, inquiry about it late at night, I might do it more often. So next one is E11. And I'm just gonna leave small areas for that last E color. And the shoes, I'm gonna go ahead and finish that one off with this E11, which is the true color, because she's a lot of shadow down there on her feet. Yes, there is a reason why I take both caps off. So it helps, um, see I just refilled my marker so they're very juicy. And in order to prevent it from blobbing on the paper, I take both the caps off and it kinda it pulls ink from the barrel to this end and this end, causing it to not all go to one end. So if I know the marker's really juicy, I will, I will take both caps off. And then if you have really warm hands, sometimes, hi Amanda, sometimes if you have really warm hands, it will draw the ink to that end. I don't, I have very cold hands, so that's why I don't always take them off on both ends, but um, Jamie always does because her hands are really, she has warm hands. I, I do not, I have cold hands. I'm cold all the time. Hi Rebecca. I'm, well, I'm excited that there's so many of you up still. Gonna finish coloring that in, and I already did her feet, so I missed this little spot on her ear, so I'm just gonna fix that real quick. And then, we have the one girl done, so now I'm going to do the skin on the other girl while I have these uh, skin tone colors out. But yes, I take both caps off most of the time, but sometimes I miss taking both caps off. But I did just refill them, so I know they're all juicy and great. You're welcome. Anytime, ask any questions. I'm more than happy to answer questions. So E000, I'm gonna start with the skin tones on this one. Oh, you just finished, oh it is, it probably is early in California, huh? It's um, it's like 10.30 here at night, 10.30 p.m. Central Time. But I'm usually coloring late into the night. I would say, I try to stop by midnight, but sometimes that doesn't actually happen. <laughs> Depending on whether I can color or not, sometimes if I can't, if I can't uh, sleep, I'll get up in color. I come out here in the craft room. Rebecca, did you hear that? The 3D printer, it just stopped. Aw, that sounds like fun, helping people make their first two cards. That's awesome. I'm just gonna do her face first and then I'll come back and do her arms and legs. So I'm gonna start with her face. I love helping people make cards and projects. And Well, you guys know. I, I love doing the 3G, 3D projects and stuff. They're a lot of fun. So for the shadow area, I'm gonna go like around where her hair is on her face. I'm actually gonna do both sides. And then I'm gonna do the inside of her ear and a little bit of the lower side. Not really gonna do much down her face on that side but I am going to on this side because the flowers are building a shadow on her face. And then I'm gonna do a little bit around her neck here, just like that. And I'll probably wait till the second color to put any on her glasses, just so they don't stick up. Oh, the pop-up card thing that we did at the retreat, oh, that was so much fun, wasn't that fun? 
So this one is E21. That's awesome. I love it. I love it when people share what they're doing. <laughs> she said she likes your holder updates. Good job, Dale. <laughs> He's here. He's in his craft room. We actually have two craft rooms in our house. We have um, like a formal living room and a formal dining room that we've converted to two different craft rooms. So they're connected without a door in between. But we can see each other and talk, and he's out here working as well. That's why you could hear the printer, and he's also working on his cosplay costume. So he's pretty busy right now. I'm going to put a little bit of shadow here under her glasses. And then I'm going to go to E11. Oops, I think I put that one upside down. Hee <laughs> hee. Okay, so E11 is the true color, so I'm going to go around where I put those colors already, and then I'm going to kind of outline her face right here. Fill that in a little bit more. This is a little bit harder to do without turning the paper around. But I'm trying not to turn it too much, because I think we have some people in here that um, aren't usually on the lives during the day so I don't want to flip it around too much for you guys. I'm going to put a little bit of shadow around this side of her glasses and then a little bit down under this part right here. And then we're going to leave the rest for the lighter colors. I've been working on refilling all these markers now that I did all Jamie's while she was here. <laughs> Now I'm doing all mine. And I found one with a cracked lid, which was very disappointing. I'm gonna fill in the rest with this E00. Gonna give it a second to mix together before I go in and soften those lines. As you can see, I have a few harsh lines right here that I want to soften. So I give it a second for it to um, for it to kind of blend together before I go in there and mess with it too much. And then I'm going to add the R11 for her cheeks right now while the ink is still wet on this side and this side to give her rosy cheeks. And then I'm going to go back with the E00 and just smooth out those rosy cheek lines so they don't look funny. And there we go. So her little face is done. I'm going to move on to her arms and feet here in a few minutes. Wow, there's seven of you guys up late. See, I'm not the only late person. Although you guys might not be coloring with me, but <laughs> at least there's some people up wanting to watch. If you guys like late night videos like this, let me know and maybe we can do more. So I'm just using the E000 to wet the paper with the lightest color. This is good for the California people then, huh? Because it's not it's not too late for you guys. E04, which I will know in a couple of weeks when I am in California for the expo coming up in Pleasanton. I will be there. Just gonna show the, the fold in her wrist. A little bit down here at the bottom that's furthest away from the sun, a little bit in that little crack where her elbow is bent. And then I'm going to do a little bit where her jeans are and then a little bit where the shoes and her feet touch. I do that on both sides. It is perfect. Good. 
And now I told my husband, I'm, I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do a live late night. And he was like, this late? <laughs> I said, yeah, why not? Some people might be coloring still or be up still. Okay, I'm just gonna push that dark shade a little bit along the outside. Just keeping that shadow area in there. I like these little girls. They're so cute. I know some of you um, jumped on a little later. I have the the full set right here. The other two girls. That's the. Uh, there's one more, and there's one more. So there's four of them in the set. They're super cute. If you haven't seen the release that we just had at Sweet Sentiment, these were part of the release and it is super duper cute. So this is my true color, E11. And so I'm going to use a little bit more of the E11 because it's the true skin, skin color. The tops of her fingers and the base where her knuckles are. Kind of fill in that wrist. This dark area here and then I'm gonna go down here and fill in the rest of her little feet with this true color because it still looks light enough down there and it's such a teeny tiny spot you can kind of do whatever you want with that oh uh, I yeah I love this stamp set but I'll be honest if you've never seen me and Jamie before this is what I look like and this is what Jamie looks like my glasses are shaped just like that. My hair is that length. It's super cute. There's the E00, where we're gonna fill in the rest of those areas. And I'm gonna touch up one more time down here just to make sure it's all colored in. So now we've done all the skin for both the girls. So they now look real. It's a Sandy and Jamie stamp set. <laughs> it is, it looks just like us. It's super cute. So I'm not gonna put my markers away because that'll take too long, but I am gonna pull out the next colors. So I have purpley hair. So I'm going to do a purple-ish color for my hair. So I'm only going to use three colors for my hair. I'm going to use RV69, RV66, and RV55. And if we need to add another color, we will. Did you think they look like us? <laughs> I did too. When Jamie first sent it to me, she said, hey, check out this stamp set. And I said, oh, that looks like me. And she said, it is you. I told her to draw you. <laughs> So I'm going to use RV69 to do the, um, the darkest shadow area in the hair. So I'm just going to come from these edges and just do some small little brush strokes. I am going to have to turn this just a little bit to get these brush strokes in here good. A little bit down there, around her ear. And then I'm going to come out a little bit from her neck. And I'm going to do a little bit under her ear. And then I'm going to go a little bit on the top of her head like this and just kind of bring it down just a little bit. Going with the, um, going with the way the hair would go in the uh, direction of the hair so that it looks more natural. This looks much brighter on the, on the screen than it does on my paper. <laughs> and it looks like I need to clean my RV69 marker as well. And then this one is RV66. This one I already got to. It's clean. <laughs> and this time I'm going to pull from the color. Instead of pushing back into it, I'm going to pull out from the colors. Kind of extend them a little bit further. Like this. I always curl my hair under which is why I'm kind of 
curling these um, in that direction is because I always curl my hair under. And so I thought, oh, that would, you know. And look, Sandy is holding flowers. Yep, she is. I am holding flowers. And then I'm going to come down just a little bit more from the top. Hi, Angela. Look at Angela's up late, too, just like me. Because I know she is in Texas, too. And then RV55 I'm going to use to finish. And I'm going to do like a swoosh motion, so kind of from both ends. Because if you just do one, you get a thicker spot where your marker hits the paper. So if you just kind of do this brush, it becomes an even stroke all the way across. So that's what I'm doing here. So I don't have any thick lines stuck in the middle of my hair. Because, you know, who would want that? That would look like they messed up my, my dye job there with my purple hair. So there we go. There's some purple hair. And it's not quite that dark. I wonder if I brought it up closer if you could see. See? It's not quite as bright as it looks when it's down. And the paper has shimmer in it, so you see the sparkle. So I'm using Sweet Sentiment paper. The sparkle's so pretty. So that is the hair color I chose for me. Now, if you guys know Jamie, she always changes her hair color. <laughs> so we're just going to choose one that we feel like doing. <laughs> and I think I'm going to give her kind of a brownish blonde so I'm really winging these colors I did not plan any of these colors before we started so bear with me while I play around I think I'm going to actually do five colors even though <laughs> I don't usually do five colors in such a small space but I am going to this time I'm going to do E39 YR27 YR24, thanks, YR23, and YR21. Um, oh, bye, Jen. The skin tones I used were, I still have two hours before evening news. <laughs> right? Because I think, are you in California too? These are the colors I used for the skin tones. So E04, E21. E11, E00, and E000. So those are the ones I used for the skin tones, and I did it on both of them, same colors on both girls. And I used R11 for their cheeks. Hi, Mickey. So I'm going to do this girl's hair color. I'm going to start with the E39, which is my darkest one. Don't feel forgotten. <laughs> Hi, Marianne. I think you're in California too, aren't you? So I'm going to go up from the ends of her hair. She's going to have dark um, ends and light hair. And then I'm actually going to do it a little bit from this um, flower as well. My screen only lets me read small comments, so if you guys write me a little bit more than that sometimes I can't read it all and just a little bit where this part is and I'm going to take this little piece that's the back side of her hair in the darkest color yeah so it's not as late for you Marianne as it is for some other people like for us it's like 10 30 10 45 something like that right now so much later than but I always color at night so we're good I'm much more spunkier at night. Oh my. Oh no. So now I have YR27 and I'm just going to pull out a little bit from there and you're going to see this is more of a golden color. That's kind of transitioned into my more of a blonde color here. When you mix it with the brown, it, it leaves it a little brown but kind of gives it that golden look to it. So this is going to be a really pretty, I think. I hope, anyway, because, you know, I'm winging it. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi, Tyler. Look at that. More people joining. I love that. I got so excited, Tyler, I threw my marker on the floor. YR24. And then I'm just going to go over and pull out a little bit further. This one's a little bit lighter, so getting a little bit lighter is going to give us a really good highlight. I don't think I might actually leave one of the colors out, and then we'll only have four colors. <laughs> nope. Let's do them both. Why are 23 next? This one's just gonna have a little bit of it because this color is really golden. And I almost need a softer color to keep the highlights. So I'm really just gonna throw in a few little highlights of this one, just a little bit. And then when I go over it with the other one, it'll lighten it a little bit more. So I'm gonna use YR21, which is a much lighter color as you can see and then I'm just going to go over it one more time really lightly with this color and now she has I forgot that little corner right there I have to go back in with that one so now she has a really light so we have one with purple hair and one with a blondish brownish kind of I don't know what do you call that, dirty blonde or something. Yes, I am coming to California and oh, I'm glad you like it. So now we have to pick um, pants. And since Jamie usually does blue jeans, I'm not gonna do blue jeans tonight. I'm going to do, I think I'm going to give her green pants. I don't know why, I just feel like doing green pants tonight. So we're gonna give this one her green pants. So YG67, YG63, YG03, and YG61. So I'm going to start with YG and give her Daisy Dukes. <laughs> YG67 first. And I'm just going to start by making her hips a little darker because we all know we got some round hips going on. And then I'm going to do around the bottom of her pants and the inseam. And then I'm going to get way up there in the inseam that no one likes to do. I'm going to go down a little bit and then I'm going to go around here. Up her inseam. And there we go. Creativation, yes. I will be at Creativation. Creativation is going to be fun. I've never been. I've wanted to go for about seven years now. And I haven't been able to make it yet. So I'm super excited. This one is YG63. I think Creativation is going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. So I'm just, I'm kind of pulling out from the, the darkest shadow color. Just adding a little bit there. This is not really our mid-tone color so I am using a little bit more of it but I'm gonna probably equally share the amount I use between this one and the next one it's gonna be a party party in Florida it's gonna be so much fun this one's YG03 I've never been there so I am stoked no party for you Shoot. Time with friends makes it a party. And we have a party right here, right now. Your party time. So I'm using YG03. It kind of brings out that brighter green. It looks so much brighter in the video than it does on my paper. 
I'm just going to finish off rounding her pants. You can see it. This one kind of moves the color a lot, so you have to be a little careful with that one. In and out in about three days. Wow. Then I'm going to take YG61, and this should tone down that 03 just a little bit. It's more of a muted color. Kind of finish. I'm gonna kind of go over the whole thing, which I don't normally do, but because it's such a bright green, I want to kind of tone it down a little bit. So there we go. When I hold it up, you'll be able to see. It's green, but it's not that bright green. The screen has got it really bright. It's a little more of a grass green looking. CHA, yeah. I got so used to CHA and then they named it NAMTA, which got so confusing to me. And I might use these same colors, so I'm going to set them aside because I might use those same colors for the leaves inside the flowers here in just a little bit. And because now we have to pick what color her shirt. And I think because she has so much color with her purple hair and her green pants that I'm probably gonna make her shirt white. So I'm going to use some C's, the C3, C1, and C00. And then if I need to, I might add the colorless blender. So I'm gonna just have that one out just in case I need it. So I'm gonna start, I keep scooting over, you see that? <laughs> Maybe I should move my camera over next time. Um, C3 is gonna be the first one that I'm gonna use and this is gonna be for my shadow areas. So I'm gonna go over here uh, underneath her shoulder and along where these flowers are also along the her elbow area where her arm is bent. A little bit here, but not too far because most of that is in the sun. A little bit along here, but not over here because that's kind of where the sun is coming from. Or in my vision, that's where the sun is coming from. And then over here for sure because it will be shadowed quite a bit. So I'm just going to put those colors in for now, and then I'm gonna move on to the next color, which is C1. And this one I'm gonna push back instead of pulling out because I wanna kinda of control how much of that color goes onto her shirt because I want it to appear white, not gray. I'm gonna put a little bit down here because she does have a, like a little bit of a curve to her hips. Ooh, a hot foil machine? I don't know what that is. I don't have one of those for sure. Wow, super easy. Hmm, I like super easy. Me, I just been, I ordered some alcohol blending solution from Amazon and it just came in and I think what I'm gonna be doing is playing with that alcohol inks Tyler got me started on that and now I just it's all I, I just can't wait to do it again so maybe I'll do that tomorrow Tyler says everywhere is close to him when you live where he lives. <laughs> so I wanted to show you real quick that I left spaces that were not colored in at all and I'm gonna mix that those and blend those out with the colorless blender. So it'll keep the white and keep the shadow but still make it look more like a solid shirt. Just and you want to make sure you don't touch that green because then she's going to have a light green shirt. 
So now I'll show you what that looks like up close. See how it kind of blends it out and just shows the shadow, eat the shadows. So I think that's, I like how that came out. So I think I'm going to give her white shoes too. Now, who, I don't own any white shoes, <laughs> but one can only make believe when they're playing that, when they're coloring their own, they can make them whatever color they want. So I'm going to give myself white shoes that I'll never own because I can't seem to keep anything white if I do. And then C1. Pushing it back because I want to leave, I want it to appear to be more white than gray. Oh yay! I'm glad you like it. She looks adorable. And when I use the die cut to cut her out, all this won't matter. <laughs> I like that. It's helpful. I usually try to stamp mine on something that has some extra space around it because I do a lot of this type of you know, color swatching and stuff when I'm trying to choose colors. Um, and then I can just die cut it right off of there and I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so now I'm gonna use that colorless blender again just to smooth out those lines so they look like shoes and not like I just wrote on my shoes. So, see? She looks like she has little white shoes on with her little white shirt. <laughs> Both already have spots. That's why I don't buy anything white. <laughs> because I it's always it's always white if I do that. <clears throat> so I want I'm gonna color this little package that she's holding her flowers with. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to use um, my E40s. So E44, 43. 42 and 41 so I'm gonna start with the E44 for the shadow area for the darkest area I'm gonna do it around her face under the flowers and then where this folds right here I want to kind of put a little bit there and then right here, where the back of her hand is, right here. And then where this other hand is. And then down along the bottom, just a little bit. And maybe in this teeny tiny spot over here. And then I'm gonna move on to my E43. When, once you get used to dropping these little caps in here, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to actually push back on this color too, like we did with the skin. And I just, when I decide whether I want to push back into the color or pull out, it usually depends on how dark. Like if I really want something um, to be darker, uh, like, you know, a darker more saturated color I'll pull and if I want to keep that dark shadow up in there I'll usually push back like Jamie does I don't I do more pulling than pushing but that's kind of up to you are you bringing my daughter to Florida E42 is the next color I might bring my husband to Florida Well, y'all didn't hear him say, uh-uh, so I guess that is a possibility. I'm going to leave a little bit for the last color, which is E41. And E41 is really light, and it's one of those that kind of um, pushes the color a little bit, like the colorless blender, so I have to be... A little careful when I put this color in not to not to wash out any of my other colors so I'm doing it in these little strokes here make sure I don't I just blend the color and I don't push it out this marker feels a little dry I might not 
I got to cut down this one yet. Let's see. Yep. That one needs some juice for sure. Okay. So now her little package to hold the flowers is all done. Yay! Oh, tell your bestie he has to come? Gail, you have to go to Florida. Cameron says his bestie needs to be there. <laughs> I think I think we could definitely get him to come if we tell him we're going to do something related to Disney. Good night, Angela. Okay, so let's do let's go back to these green colors and do the leaves. So YG 67, 63, 03, and 61. So I'm going to start with the 67, and I'm going to do all the leaves at one time. So I'm going to start with this one, and then I'm going to do this one. And some of these, it's hard to tell if they're a leaf or not, but you can make it a leaf, which is what I'm doing. There's one right here. Hopefully I won't miss any when I'm doing this. And then, let's see, there's one up here at the top. Whose bullet? Is that your dog or cat or animal of some sort? YG63. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the YG63 because it's still pretty dark. And then the YG03. I think I'm going to leave YG61 off because I want the leaves to kind of stand out a little bit. So YG03. I'm going to fill in the rest of it with YG03. Keep that really bright green for the leaves. Plus the space is so small. I don't think I could fit five colors in there. I bet you Jamie could though. But not me. So there we go. Got some little leaves in there. Aw, mini schnauzer. Technically a tongue. <laughs> That's funny. I have a, uh, I have a chawini. He's pretty little but very chubby. He's a very chubby little fat guy. Sometimes I have to call him fat boy, but he is super cute. And you know I can't do this whole thing without true purple, so I'm definitely going to have some purple flowers. So... We will do purple flowers, and let's see what other color we want. Purple flowers and yellow. We should have yellow. I think we should have yellow. She try. She sure would try to get five in there for sure. But that's that's not me. I I don't think I, I'm gonna. I am gonna try to put four in these flowers, but so we're gonna do purple and yellow. And we probably need maybe a blue. But let's do like a BG blue. Like 18, 11. Okay. So we'll I'll start with the BGs. BG 18, 13, and 11 are what I'm going to try. I'm going to just do those three. And I'm going to do this flower up behind her head. These are the petals, and then this is the petal that's folded over. I'm going to include this one, even though I'm not really sure if that's part of the petals or not. It will be tonight. And then BG13, and I'm just going to pull out from there, smoothing that out a little bit. And this one that's under there. And then I'm going to come in with BG11. And I'm going to finish out that petal. 
subtle with this color. Keep that really light. I kind of jumped in some colors to keep the tips really, really light. So we got that blue one. And I think because this is the same kind of flower, I think I'm going to do this one blue as well. And then we'll do purple over here and yellow over here. So let's start with the blue again, the BG18. And we'll do the same thing, starting from the inside where we want that flowers are overlapping, so they'll be the darkest there. And here. And this one. And then this one is hiding up under here. And then I'm going to come in with BG13. And I'm going to just pull out from that last color I put there, leaving a little bit of space for the next one, the next color. This one takes a little longer because she's got lots of flowers in her hands. Then this one won't take as long, but it'll be fun. I love this flower. Love it. And then BG11 to finish these areas here. Even the tips of the petals really bright. So you can see the sun is hitting them. There we go. So now we have two of the flowers done. That actually wouldn't look bad with them all the same color, but we're not going to do that. Smooth, flat layer of fondant. You must be talking food. Y18, 15, 13, and 11. And that would definitely be a Tyler question because I don't cook. So he would have to answer that question. <laughs> so for this one, I'm going to do a little bit along the edges closest to the blue, like at the base here but just a little bit. And then I'm gonna do inside where the flowers are overlapping. And honestly, I mean really honestly, if you just put some color in there, no one's gonna really be able to tell if you did it in the right place or whatever. Because it's so little anyway, as long as you have some different shading colors in there, you should be good. I need to clean this marker too. Y15, going to be my next color, and I'm going to put a little bit more of this one. Just to go out just a little bit further from where I was before, I am going to fit four colors in this, so I have to use it sparingly. Otherwise, I have too many colors, too, not enough room for my last colors. Oh, a round cake. Mmm, you guys are making me hungry late at night. This is Y13. I'm going to pull out from that one, leaving the tips for the brightest shade. By this time, the center part will be all filled in mostly because it's going to be a deep, dark color because it doesn't get much sunlight. I can't imagine making that fondant. It looks so awesome when you get done. I know what fondant is. Y11. But I don't like to eat fondant. It tastes kind of funny. I'm probably not even supposed to eat it. So now I'm finishing just the tips of the flowers to bring in that color. And there's my yellow one. And it kind of looks green on the picture, but I promise it's not. It's a yellow. Super pretty. Now we're going to add a little bit of purple in the back. I think that will just make the picture, the image, perfect. Perfect, perfect. 
so I'm just going to use three colors, B17, 15, and 12. I'm going to start with 17. I'll make sure I'm in the, in the frame here. And I'm going to do just the bottom parts of the petals and the parts that are touching the other petals. And then I'm just going to put a little bit in here in the center. Oh, thank you. Here's V15. This is going to be my mid, my middle color. So a little bit more, leaving just the tips open. And then the last color being V12. Oh, I do like buttercream. I do like buttercream icing. That's my favorite. And then with this V12, I'm just going to touch the tips with this V12. And it has a teeny bit of a different shade to it. So that looks really cute. I like it. I like it. I like it. So I'll show you up close so you can see all my pretty flowers. So there's one girl done. And now we just have to finish the other one. So for this one, I'm gonna make this um, flower a daisy. And I think I want to do her, I wanna actually do the stem and the daisy before I do the clothes so I can decide on the colors of the clothes after I do the daisy. So I'm going to go back to my C colors, C3, C1, C00, and I'm going to use that colorless blender again. Oops, to keep it to keep it bright. White. Okay, so C3. I'm going to start with C3. And I'm going to put it over where the flowers where the petals overlap and then along that little seam right there a little bit along the base but not too much I'm gonna do this one in the back a little bit because it's under the flower and this piece right here is part of the green stem so I'm, I'm gonna skip that piece and then this part right here I'm just going around so I can make it look a little more rounded because it should actually be rounded. I mean, it is a flower. And then around here, along the base a little bit. And then this one that's underneath should have more shadow. So I'm going to start off like that. Now, sometimes when I do flowers, I'll come up from this end as well. But that's usually if they're more curved over, you know, like they have a little curve to them. But these... I'm not going to color them like they're curved. I'm gonna, just going to leave them like they're not. Do you see that? I dropped my marker right there. Good thing that die cut will cut that right out. So C1 is going to be the next one. I'm going to turn her just a little bit because I want to push that color back. Sort of like we did with the skin. I'm going to come up this way, pushing this color back. And then I'm going to do the same with this. I'm going to do it here, kind of keeping that round idea there. I'm going to do it here, along this petal, and then along the back here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to need to see a picture of this fondant cake when you finish it. I'm going to be looking for that in the group for sure. Again, I'm going to push back with this C00, leaving a little bit of white space to use the colorless blender. And 
because I want this to look more like a day, like like a little white daisy. Oh, nice! Ooh, look at all the cooking people we have on here. I'm so glad you guys are here because I wouldn't know any of those answers. Now I'm going to take the colorless blender and I'm just going to go through where the white areas are and just make sure I smooth out those lines. It, the colorless blender pushes the ink so you don't want to go too far into the darkest shadow areas or you'll lose them. So you want to just be a little bit careful with that. So here is, when I hold it up close, you can see it a little better. You see this colorless blender went a little dark right there. I bet if I turned it over, you'd be able to see it. See, you can see all my colored stuff on the back. Super cute. And I'm also going to push this a little bit out because I don't want that to go into my, my petal when I, when I die cut that out. Oh no, you killed another marker. <laughs> That's not good. I actually found one. Um, this one, which is one of my favorites, is V06. And I don't know if you can see it in there, but you see those? Those are cracks in my lid. You see that? So if I hold it up to the light, you can see the light shine through those two cracks. And I was so sad because I had just placed an order for to replace some nib, to get some replacement nibs and stuff, and I didn't know that was broken. So now I have another one I need to order. So that's a bummer. Oh yeah, I did. Oh, so you guys saw my name on there. So I printed my name on. I use the Silhouette, but you can use a Cricut or whatever you want. And then I put my name on my markers. So if you want to see, because I just got some new markers, so I had to put some more on there. I have done it for one other person that asked me to do it. And there's a um, fairly, uh, it's fairly inexpensive to do. Um, if you need me to do them for you, let me know and I can certainly do that. But this is what I used. So I printed my name and then I took this transfer tape and you put it on there and you pick up the name and then you just take the name and put it on the marker. So it worked really, really well. It, worked, it, it took a long time because there's 358 of them, <laughs> but it was well worth it. And they haven't come off at all. They're on there really good. So I like that a lot. And my nibs, I ordered my nibs from that, from Violetta Ink. I think that's how you say it. If you go to our website under some of Jamie's favorite things or whatever, she has, um, she has a link, like an affiliate link to Violetta Ink. And I always use her affiliate link and that's where I order my nibs. I mean, I always go to Jamie first, but if we don't have it in the shop, then... I go to the Violet Ink, and we don't have V06, so I'm going to have to go to her. <laughs> so I'm back to YG67. I'm going to use these same greens that I've been using throughout this image over here because I'm going to put both of these girls on the same card, so I want to kind of stay with the same colors. And I'm going to put this YG67 down here and along under her ear and then along this side where her body is shading it so that's where I, that's where I get my nibs and I usually buy them in, in large lots like you know five or ten at a time I'm actually adding some little some little leaf branches out there because I think that just helps you know make it look a little more realistic so I'm just adding a few little veins in my in my leaf and then I'm gonna come up here and this Part by her head and then this little part right here it's gonna have some green on it as well yeah that is a good idea 
re you could use return address labels. I mean, there's a lot of different ways. Um, I started out putting washi tape around the caps or whatever, but that it never seemed to stay on for me. The washi tape would always start peeling off and it kind of drove me crazy. Even though I made sure every time I put them in my case, I put the washi tape up, it still came off. So I had, I saw Jamie put her name on hers and I was all over it. I was in 100%. And so I believe I, I had some bad vinyl when I was doing mine. So I believe the weeding took a lot longer than it normally would. But it, it took me like about three days to print them all and then transfer my name on all of them. Some are dark pink and some are light pink and some are dark purple and dark and light pink because I didn't have all of the same color when I was printing them out <laughs> so I had to mix them up a bit but hey as long as they got my name on them we're good it has helped so many times in fact it helped too when Jamie was here because right before when she was packing her stuff I was doing some coloring on those fish that we have to do for you know the show's coming up and um she I pulled out a marker and it had her name on it and I said oh you probably want this one to go home with you <laughs> so it was helpful to have our names on it because you just you never know with us sharing this side of the craft table we both had our markers over there and they just kept getting mixed up but we knew because our name was on them so that was very very helpful so I'm just going to finish off these small, small pieces up here with this color. I'm not even going to put the lightest color. But yeah, I love my name on them. I wouldn't have it any other way. When I'm at an event, people know they're mine. I can lend them to someone to use for a minute or two or for a project they're working on. And then I know they always come back to me because they, they have my name on them. So there is the YG03 and then I'm going to come in with the YG61 and finish off that petal. And I'm just going to come from the top into the color I already had so I don't wash out any of my bright color. Just kind of touch this up a little bit. And then I'm going to come down this left side of the stem. So there we go. And now the stem kind of matches the pants, and so they'll coordinate a little bit when I put them together on the same card. So those are my greens. And before we move on, we need to do this part up here on the on the daisy. So I'm gonna do that with um, E59 and E09, 59 and 09, and then I'm going to add some of this YR27 and YR24. I know those sound like interesting combos. Look how different they look in color. Oh, you used an engraver? Wow, you have to be really good doing that. I would think that would be kind of hard. You must be handy with that engraver. E59 is the first one that I'm going to do with a marker sticking to my thumb. And this time when I do um, this, I'm not going to use the little flicks like that. I'm going to actually do dots all over. So I'm going to use the pouncing method. So I'm going to kind of pounce along the edges here. And then kind of where the artist drew these lines to show some definition on that. I'm going to just pounce them in there. You can't use your initials anymore. <laughs> Are your initials A, S, S? <laughs> I don't know what your middle name is. But I'll tell you something funny. I didn't I did not use my initials because my initials are SML. So the only thing I think of is small, medium, large, and I just can't put my I just can't put those initials on anything. 
So once I got married, I said, yeah, I'm not using those initials anymore. I look like I'm saying, would you like small, medium, or large? Ha, uh, it is Sue. <laughs> I, I thought that's where you were going with that. <laughs> that's funny. Why R27? is going to bring out a little bit of a brighter yellowish kind of color in there and then when I put the YR24 or maybe I should even go further like the 23 will probably be better let's see if we do 24 it's yeah we probably should do 23 because look how much brighter 23 is so we'll do the YR23 instead and then I'm just going to touch the tip areas with that to bring out that more of a yellowish shine to these. And then, voila, we have our sweet little top of the flower there. Perfect. So now, I believe what I'm going to do is make her shirt this teal color. I'm going to make her shirt that color. And then what are we going to do for her pants? Should we make Jamie wear yellow? She would, I don't know if she'd be happy about that. Maybe we should give her black pants. Let's give her black pants. So we will do them. I'm going to use the T's. So I will use T9, 7, and 5. So we'll try 9, Seven and five, and sometimes I have to add in the ones in between just to pass Daisy Dukes. <laughs> One of these times I am going to do that. <laughs> I have to test that on my own first, though. I'm not sure I want to do that test changing them to shorts live. <laughs> but I might be able to. You never know. Okay, so I'm going to start with T9, and I'm going to put the darker part around the curves of our waist like this and then I'm going to come down here to the bottom of base of her pants and I'm going to do very small flicks all the way up to the inner lining of her pants a little bit down and come around the bottom here and that's it for this one this is really dark so I want to Lighten it up a little bit. So we're going to go to T7. And these might be more like a dark gray pants, but we'll see. And then I'm going to pull from that color out. And I only have three colors, so I'm going to fill this in. I'm going to pull this out here. I'm going to pull out from here to kind of make them look rounded. Go along here, pull this one out a little bit more. Around her waist. And then Daisy Dukes would be cute. I really I might have to play with that. That's an awesome idea. I'm gonna try that. T5. Now sometimes T5 washes it out, so I'm gonna have my T6 handy just in case. I'm going to go through here, and I'm just kind of doing that swishing motion I did before, just to kind of blend those two together, leaving a little bit of a white area for the shadow to show up on there. So just kind of a back and forth motion, and I'm doing it on like over a second time, not just once, but twice. Like that. So it's still not blended real well, so I'm gonna go in there again, over the line areas. Kinda just make sure it gets blended really well. Like that. So we still get some shaded area in there. A little bit hard to see with the lighting the way it is, but there we go. Perfect. So
So I'm actually going to give her blue shoes too. So we're almost done with her. Almost done with both of them. I'm not actually going to make the card out of them tonight because tonight is just coloring for me. And I'm going to use this BG18, 13, and 11. Hi, Julie. Your CPAP saved your life. Did I miss something on this when I was coloring? BG18. Let me go around this lower part of like where her curved waist is on both sides. I'm also going to do the top shoulder areas here under her arms a little bit. And then I like to come in a little bit from the waist like this with this little triangle kind of give her that, that sexy waist. You know, because who doesn't want that? Let's see? Oh, I see. Okay, I did miss that. Okay, so I'm going to also come down here and do her shoes, the bottom of the bottom soles of her shoes with this darkest color. <laughs> so glad you could join us, Julie. This is late night with Ledoux because it's late here. BG 13. So I'm gonna pull out from this darkest shade. I gotta kind of go over it a little bit because I jumped kind of in numbers quite a bit or I could do tip to tip. We may have to do that if it doesn't blend out quite as well as we wanted it to. But it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna come down from this area and around the edge of her shirt, around her collar because we only have three colors so this is my middle color. I'm kind of come in from the side here and kind of close this up a little bit. I might want to put a little bit more right here. There we go. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought I would test out and see how many people would be up late and would enjoy spending a little time coloring late at night. I'm always up this late. Hi, Becky. I'm always up this late. I, I don't go to bed early, ever. Even when I'm at Jamie's house and she goes to bed, I'm in her craft room coloring <laughs> by myself, again, just like I usually am here. Well, I mean, my hubby's here, but he's in his craft room, so. Okay, and then I'm going to blend out from this one and this one and try to bring them together Kind of put some color on there and then let it sit for a minute, see if it blends it together. This one might actually need a little bit of tip to tip to kind of smooth out those colors. So when you when you do tip to tip, so this is my BG11. You can see BG11. There you go. And this is my BG13. So I'm going to take the 13 and I'm I'm going to hold it here and take the 11 and I'm going to brush across the nib. Don't use any ink you have on here because this is dry, jelly, yucky stuff and it'll clog your nib. Just go straight onto the marker like this. And then you can blend out from that and it will mix those two, two colors together to give you an in-between color that will help shade so much better. It will not ruin your marker. It will not change. It will just really blend. You see how well that blended those two together? So good. So this one up here, right here, was just the BG11. And then once I added the tip to tip, it just smoothed it out for you. So that's why we do 
the tip to tip to kind of give us that in-between color that we need in order to mesh these two smoothly. Just the only thing you have to remember is that after you do this tip to tip um, procedure, then you want to take your nib and just rub it along just and to get any excess dark off of this marker, but it won't ruin the marker. I mean, look, you can't even see where I put that color. And you can do that with any color. Just always remember the one that you're coloring with is the one that you want to pick up the ink. And then you get that extra color that you wanted in there. So I already closed my marker and I really wanted to do it on my shoes. Although I might like my shoes more like this because it blended really well and looks like the light is on it. So there you go. There's Sandy and Jamie hanging out. Isn't that super fun? Do you guys want to see what I've been working on other than these? Thumbs up if you want to see some more stuff. I'll show you what I'm working on. You like it? Super cute, huh? So much fun. So that th these are actually from Floral Friends. The set looks like this. And then these are the dies that go with it. I love this set so much. I can see me using this a lot. I mean, think Mom's Day, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, birthdays, everything. So here we go. You ready? I know. And I didn't. I don't even know what kind of card I'm going to put that on. I haven't even decided yet. But I will definitely post it. Once I put it on a card, I will definitely post it so you can see. So this is what... Jamie and I worked on while she was here. Let me zoom this out a little bit so you guys can see better. Okay, so this is our this is our fish. It's called um what is this fish set called? Um oh why am I drawing a blank on it? I can't remember. But they're at the shop. They're in the shop, the fish set, but it has all these fish on it and so when Jamie was here, we just colored all these fish. Look at these rain. Any fin. Any fin is possible. That's what it's called. And so this is what we worked. Look at how many fish we colored. And we're not even done. We have to color almost 3,000 of these <laughs> for, the, for the make and take. So if you're coming to the make and take... If you're coming to the expo, you want to go to that Thursday make and take because one of these will be in your make and take project. One of these beautiful fishes. So here's the one I'm working on right now. Voila! I only have one done. But isn't that a lot of fish, isn't it? So this is what we've been working on. Holy moly, these fish. Look at how many fish that is. It's just about every color fish you could want. That's me and Jamie fish coloring while she was here. I, th I think it's cool to look at them though because there's so many of them. And then I have this stack right now left. This is what I was coloring before I went live and I was like, oh, I don't think I wanted to color fish on the live. I think I'll do the <laughs> just keep swimming, just keep swimming. So that's why I decided to do these, these girls instead. They're super fun, though. So if you guys really like um, these late night lives, let me know. And I, you know, just make a comment or say something in the in the group or whatever. And I can do them. I can do them more often. We can hang out before I go to bed, <laughs> which I probably won't be doing for another, like, hour or so. I need to color another sheet of fish before I'm done. But I really, really appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me. I will make a card out of this, I promise, and then I will post it online so you guys can see it. Thank you for joining me.
Yay! I'm so glad. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. So we are definitely going to do it again at some point. And then the more you guys like it and the more you come, the more often I'll do it. <laughs> uh, also, I might actually do some other things um, like showing some of the production stuff that we're making here at the house. So um, that would be super fun too, like showing the 3D and how we come up with that. And like you guys said, you like this. This is my Copic holder where it holds the caps and five of the markers. We have this in process. We have a refill station in process. So lots of cool things coming your way. And while we're working on them, we might actually um, show the production side of it so you guys can see. My um, husband's been working on stencils, so he made this for me using some layered stencils, which he thought would be super cool. And they are very, very cool. One more shot of that, if you want to see it. He made those for me. So we're working on that. Um, we make all the stencils in-house. I design, and my husband and I cut. Yeah, the refill station is amazing. And there's another piece to it, too. Look. So they're going to be in the same color, but the marker... So when you are refilling your marker, you know how... I don't know if you guys know, but these refills are hard to squeeze. And I tore the tendon in my um, hand a couple of, um, probably about a year and a half ago. And so my hand isn't as strong as I would like it to be. So I asked my husband to make me a holder so I could put the marker in the holder. And then I can fill the marker by squeezing with both hands so that my hand doesn't start hurting in here. So he made this holder, and when the marker's in it, you can see the nib on the bottom. So you can see if it's fill, you know, if it's getting wet and juicy, then you know it's you're not going to overfill it. And if you do by chance accidentally overfill it, you can have a napkin to catch it underneath, and it fits both ends in there. So it's super cool. So I just sit around and go, hey, it'd be nice if I had blah. <laughs> And then my husband comes up with something and shows it to me and says, what about this? And this is like third shot at making this holder. Like the first one looked different and then there was a the second one <laughs> until we get one that looks really good and is really sturdy and then we roll with it. So right now the marker, um, these marker holders right now, he's currently printing. Um, so as soon as we finish printing the bunch, they will be shipped to Jamie and they'll be in the shop. So I would say maybe two weeks. Yes. It, yeah. When you pull those tendons, man, they don't, I don't think, I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't think mine ever healed 100%. Like it feels really good and I don't have any problems coloring, but when I have to like squeeze, like really compress that you know and squeeze something over and over again it I just can't it just starts hurting again so I love this is so handy and then these uh, the, when you're filling these if you have the lid off there's they don't stand up very well and when they do if you bump it like it'll just fall over so I told him I needed something to put it in so it doesn't fall over and then I use q-tips and some other stuff but this is just the prototype because I told them the lip needs to be a little bit bigger in case you wanted to put the caps in there I didn't want them to like roll off so we're still working on this one this one should be in the shop soon like maybe in about two weeks depending on shipping time and then this one will be immediately following that. So yeah, you you can yeah you I mean you can't you can't actually pre-order it on the site yet. But we have been making a list of people that want the the marker holder. So just send me a DM and then I can put your name on the list so you can get the marker holder. But it'll be in different colors too. I think, honey, what colors are we doing? I think we're doing a black white pink and purple and the we have this pink and then we also have like a brighter pink and we have a purple which is this purple and then black and white so there will be several different 
We don't have any orange yet, Tyler, but I did tell my husband when he was ordering that he needed to do, buy one roll of filament of orange to do every single thing that you want in orange. <laughs> when we were picking colors, I go, Tyler wants orange. <laughs> Alrighty, let me write your name down real quick and so I can add you to the list. All right, I gotcha. Yes, so it might not be right away, Tyler, but we know that we that you want all the things in orange. <laughs> so all the things like these little thingies, these are in the shop already. These are hexagons. So they hold all my little bling things, and they fit together like that. They sit on my desk. So, yeah. And so this is the purple. This is the black. So, and white. I don't have a sample of the white. Sorry, no white right now. But I do have pink, purple, and black. So, Becky wants on the list, too. And if any of you did the ATC swap, I, I'm shipping those all out in the morning, so you guys will have those. If you want to see this, you want to see what mine look like. This was my ATC. The theme was plans, and this. So if you were in on it, if you were in the ATC swap, you'll get a copy of this, and it has all the dates for the Stamp and Scrap Expo that Jamie and I are going to be at this year all the dates so you will know if we are coming to a location near you and then you can check them off so and this is our plans and our checkoff list so I made it small enough so you guys could see but you just put a little ATC thing on the back and then you decorate it on the front and it's three and a half by two and a half and we're gonna have another one starting on March 1st it'll have a different theme yes we are coming to Washington, so if you want to join in, watch for the post. I always pin it to the top, but um, March 1st, I will post the new theme, and then you can jump in on it. It's pretty easy. You just make an ATC card in 3.5 by 5.5. This um, panel that you can fill in is on the website in the file section where you can just print it out yourself. You only have to make 9, and you get 9 back. And they're super duper fun. And you can use anything. This is a sticker. Can you see that's a sticker? I mean, I did, I hand colored all of these. And then I created this in my Silhouette software and printed it out for you guys. And then this is a sticker as well. And then the background is oxide. And, and then it's matted. But you can make whatever you want. I mean, everybody makes them so, so different. Um, everybody's cards are different so I don't want to show all of them because people are going to see them that are in it but these are all the, these are all see how all different they are so you don't have to you don't have to do it you know specifically like everyone else's um, we take beginners advanced whatever you want to do so definitely yes yeah a binder you can put them in a yeah, that's how I store mine, too, in a binder with baseball card holders, you know, because it's the same size. I put all mine in there. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to all the expos. So if you have any expo in your in your city, state, whatever, we're going to be there because we are attending every single one of them. So it'll be super fun. But even these little, little care, even these little ones fit on ATCs. Look at that. You could even put one of these on the ATC card. So it they look small when you have them in your hand, you know, they look really small, like they're just trader cards. But when you match them up, they the stamps will fit on them. All the stamp all the little planner stamps that we have. Super awesome. So anyway, anybody have any questions or anything before I sign off for tonight? But yes, where are you, Becky? I can tell you right now if, we have, if we're coming to a location near you, if you tell me where you are. We're going to California, Virginia, Washington, Georgia, Illinois, New Jersey, Arizona, Texas, 
California, California. There's like three in California. We're also going, the Orlando one is not listed on here because it wasn't there at the time. What city, Washington, will be held? I'm in Oregon, hopefully close to me. I don't see one in Oregon. I have been to Oregon. Washington is in, sh in uh, oh man, you would pick the one I can't pronounce. P-U-Y-A-L-L-U-P, -L -L Washington. It's near Tacoma. I'm in Fairview, Fairview, Oregon. I've been to Oregon one time. It's very pretty. It's rainy though. <laughs> but rainy's better than snow. Pua loop. I, I just I can't even say it. I'm it's just, I don't even know how to say that. I can say Schaumburg, Edison, Mesa, Irving, Sacramento, Ontario, Duluth. Chantilly, Pleasanton, and Pua Loop. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, you know what I mean. So you guys have a good evening. And if you have any questions, shoot me any DM or <laughs> hard you a <laughs> Outside Grisham, Oregon. Maybe I can try to. Oh, you should do a road trip. Road trip. Mm, so much fun. Just pick one close and do a road trip. And if, or get a hold of the expo and tell them we need one in Oregon and then we'll come. <laughs> Ontario one. Oh yeah, we'll be there. We were there last year. We'll be there again this year. Good night, Amanda. Good night, everybody. Yes, we will be in Ontario this year for sure. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. With the new make and take. So if you were there last year and you liked our make and take, love a new one this year. Thank you for joining me tonight, you guys. Good night. See you soon. Uh, toodles. That's what Jamie always says. <laughs>